Okay, so welcome back. So I'm going to take a quick look at what really does actually cause a magnetic field to be produced and what doesn't. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and leave my little my right hand rule there, and we're going to take a look at what does and doesn't cause a mag um, electromagnetic induction to occur. So if I draw a magnet via, let's pretend that's a magnet via, and let's say we'll put a wire across like that. Okay, so um, you what you have to realize is that any cutting of magnetic field by the wire will cause a magnetic induction, and this is called changing magnetic flux. So if your magnetic flux is changed by you cutting through it or moving through it, you have um, induced a current. But uh, what you have to realize is it doesn't really the the wire doesn't know if it's moved up or if a magnet's moved down. So you can either move a magnet or you can move a wire, and both of those will cause uh, magnetic flux to occur. But let's take a look at what how the wire moving can uh, which which ways a wire can and can't move in order to induce flux. So let's think if a wire can move in the direction of magnetic flux. Is that possible? Remember, magnetic flux only acts on the plane 90 degrees, and that plane would be the up-down plane in this case. And if you look at that, if it's moving left and right, there is no component of its movement which is in the direction, which is in this in this up-down direction, which is 90 degrees to the magnetic flux. So if it's moving in this direction, there will be no magnetic flux occurring. So I'm going to go ahead and red line that. So this way causes no magnetic magnetic induction. What if we move? Uh, left and right. Uh, what if we move left and right like this? Left or right? What if we move it up and down like that? So let's go give it a go at with our little finger rule. So if we move our, if you point our index finger that way and we point our fi uh, field finger that way, what way will our resultant force be? Our resultant force will be straight downwards. But as you look at this wire, if you make a uh, force go electron, um, the charged particles go straight downwards. They're not really going to go anywhere. They're not going along the wire like we like they will. So this will cause the charged particles to move, but they will kind of just build a potential difference between one side and the other side of the wire instead of across the wire. So you won't get a uh, current flowing. So that's not that won't cause the desired electromagnetic induction either. So let's move that, and um, let's cause. But uh, we do have to realize that that is still in fact 90 degrees to the field because. If you look at the field's going that way, that's going that way. So it is still 90 degrees per field. So it is a legitimate... It, I mean, the field is acting on velocity in that direction. So the only other way we can look at it is um, if we move it up or down. So if you move this up or down, up or down, what will happen? So let's give our um, hand rule. So our causative motion is that. So we'll point our finger straight up. Our... Uh, middle finger points inwards, and then which direction will our thumb point in? Our thumb will point straight down the wire. This will cause charged particles to flow down the wire and induce a current. So this is what we want. The blue one is correct. So you can take a look at that. And I mean, this is also 90 degrees to the uh, direction of the uh, magnetic field. So you kind of understand now why, it's, why I said it's a two-dimensional plane. Um, the magnetic field only acts in a plane that's kind of looks like this in this plane. Any movement in this plane the magnetic field will act on, but except when one of them, the charged particles are moving the wrong direction. So if you move up and down this plane, it will cause charged particles to move left and right. And if you move left and right on this plane, it will cause charged particles to move up and down. So now that we understand how we um, how that works, I just want to clarify one further concept. Um, if you, What happens if we have two lines? moving across instead of just one line. So we have two lines. Or what happens if you even have three lines? And then we move all, all three lines up and down. Well, what's happening is it's not only how much magnetic flux you cut, it's also how many times you cut. So if we have one little bit of magnetic flux, say, sorry, say this one here, I'm just going to draw a little bit of magnetic flux. So if we cut, move, move this entire green structure up, and we cut through these three magnetic flux. They've not only been cut once, they've been cut twice. So it's not only the amount of webbers we cut, it's also how many times the web has been cut. So this is the idea of magnetic flux linkage, which really is quite a simple concept. I'm going to come to define, define it right now, in fact. Magnetic flux linkage is equal to magnetic flux times number of coils. 
So that's that's all it is. It's just saying it's not only how much you cut, but it's also how many you cut. So it's really just bringing these two concepts together. Uh, the linkage part only just says how many times as well. So what what they found was so how do we know how much induction actually occurs? So I'm gonna give a little. How do we know how much induction occurs? So what they found out is um, the EMF induced is proportional to the rate. Now this is really what rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. Flux linkage. So I'm gonna. So the rate the EMF is proportional. The EMF is proportional to the rate, the rate. So um, it's not just the change in magnetic flux linkage. So this is a magnetic flux here, and the magnetic flux linkage, just put it in in front of it. So that's proportional to magnetic flux linkage. But it's not just that, it's also the rate. So it's not about how much you cut total. If you moved a wire very, very slowly across a huge magnetic field, it would produce a very slow, uh, small EMF. But if you moved it very fast, you would produce a high EMF. So if you have a small amount of time, we will have a high EMF. And this was really, um, this here is Faraday's law of electromagnetism. Uh, uh, sorry, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. EMF is proportional to a rate of change of magnetic flux linkage, which is EMF is proportional to N delta uh, magnetic flux over delta T. Now, then we have this thing here called Lenz's law. So what might that be? Well, to do Lenz's law is actually very simple. It's um, it makes a lot of sense if you think about it. So I'm just going to come back and draw my magnetic field any sum again, and you'll be able to see Lenz's law for yourself. Here we go. Um, draw a line. Here's my wire, and say here's my wire, and say I cause motion. Say I cause motion that direction. And I'll draw my little proton on here again. So here's my proton, and I'm and I'm giving it velocity in that direction. So let's put our index finger that way, our middle finger into the page, and we'll see that the proton, uh, when cutting through this field, will move up in that direction. But then remember, this is another set of f equals q v cross b. This is just another set of this all over again. Because we're giving it velocity again. So let's see what this will cause force on its own as well. Because remember, this whole thing is 90 degrees to the plane of a magnetic field. So any movement in this in this plane, up or across, will cause force in the other direction. So if we put our um, index finger straight up and our middle finger into the page, we'll see that this is actually resulting a force that way. So that's really interesting. Uh, moving across uh, causes a proton to move upwards, and moving upwards causes a force to move across. And this force is acting against this force, which makes a whole lot of sense if you think about conservation of energy. We can't just keep moving a, a kind of wire across a magnetic field and it's produced a lot of free energy out of nowhere. It's actually providing a resistant force, and we have to over we have to give energy to the system to overcome this resistant force in order to produce a current, which gives us energy. So that's Lenz's law. Lenz's law, summed up, if you can see that happening, it's very it makes a lot of sense. Um, Lenz's law summed up is this. Lenz's law is equal to, let's say, the direction direction of the induced EMF is such as to cause effects to oppose the change producing it. So this basically means whenever you induce the EMF, the, the, it'll actually, you're actually going to cause a force in the opposite direction of a movement which is causing the EMF. So this is kind of stopping free energy coming out of nowhere. So let's combine these two laws and we get kind of the law of how we figure it out. So EMF, which is we just call E for now, is equal to, and this is Faraday's law, is equal to the rate of change of magnetic flux, which is in um, that, um, over dt, and then Lenz's law is basically putting a negative sign to say the EMF is causing the opposite of whatever movement is causing. So that's those last two points. And now what we have to do is cover some simple applications. 
Because just remember, it's equal to the rate of change of magnetic flux. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you uh, through a formula how this is also true. So here we go. So we have um, our rudimentary formula is F equals Q V cross B, right? We've seen this many times now. Um, and I'm just going to draw a little picture as well to kind of help me later on. There's my magnetic field, there's my wire, and there's my movement, okay? Okay, so um, what do we know work done is, or energy, um, is also known as work done. So work done is equal to force times distance. So what if we times both these sides by distance? So force times distance equals charge times distance uh, V cross B. And over here, right, force times distance is just energy. So energy, and we let's move a Q down. So energy per charge equals uh, distance, and let's split up this V into length and time. Time uh, cross the magnetic field over here. So length here, what does this look like? Length is this, uh, this distance here, and the distance is this distance here. If you times V two together, what we get, we'll get the area. So, and what do you notice here? Energy per charge, that's just voltage. Voltage equals distance times length, which is the area. So that's the area here, cross the magnetic field, which is timesing the magnetic field over. The area times magnetic field, what do you know that is? Area times magnetic field is just the same as the Weber's per time. There we go. So we just saw the same thing. Voltage is equal to the Weber's per time. So the EMF induced is just how much magnetic flux total. This is Weber. When you times the area times magnetic flux density, you just get the total magnetic flux. And that's per time. So that's again is the same formula we just saw. Here we go. So you've just, that's just proven it, um, that uh, kind of through the form formulaic way if you prefer. So I'm just going to put that formula up again. So E equals, so that uh, rate of, um, the rate of, of a electromagnetic induction, the voltage you make across the wire, is equal to the magnetic flux linkage, the rate of change in magnetic flux linkage per unit time. So this is a very simple formula, and you have to remember the negative sign. It is This is what Lenz did. That's, that's Lenz's contribution to this. And it's basically saying this will create an opposite force which resists your pulling force, um, basically so that we don't get free energy, and it takes a lot of energy to keep this going. And the last thing I want to point out is um, usefulness of this. And basically this is one of the great discoveries we've made in, well, a long time. This is how you change mechanical energy into electrical energy. Basically it turns a turbine which will, um, which then turns a coil inside a magnetic field uh, and then that coil turning inside a magnetic field will generate current which flows outwards and that powers everything we've been able to do. And also um, this, another um, idea that you might have seen is electromagnetic braking. This is actually using Lenz's law, which we normally don't like because it normally means, you know, we're losing energy. But um, this is a, quite an interesting way of looking at it. Um, so if we have a magnet here and it's cutting, and a, and a kind of a wheel is spinning through the magnet, Lenz's law means that as it moves through the um, plane, which it obviously 90 degree plane, that's a plane 90 degrees to what we're looking at, as it cuts through, it's going to experience a resistive force opposite. And the resistive force will be, its magnitude of a resistive force will depend on how fast it's moving. The faster it's moving, um, the, the greater the resistive force. So if we go here and draw a little graph, so if this is the velocity, and this is the resistive force, the greater the velocity, the greater the force. And this is really useful for fast moving objects. I mean, if you imagine you're something going this fast, uh, really, really fast, like a, a Ferrari car, and it has electromagnetic braking, you will have a very great braking force, but it's very bad for, um, say, if you're a slow moving car, because if you're just trying to park from a parking lot and you're trying to use electromagnetic braking, your braking force will only be this tiny because you're, you're moving very slowly. And you'll kind of have a, you'll have, if you had draw a thing of velocity over time, if you use electromagnetic braking, it will kind of look like this. 
But anyway, um, that's the end of our video here, and hopefully you understand what electromagnetic induction is, why it happens, and kind of a formula behind it, as well as this kind of right-hand rule I've just kind of gone and made up. So I hope you enjoyed my video, and please subscribe if you want to see more.